Not a game. I wasn't sure you'd remember me after all these years. I remember you. You're the one who worked out where to send the rescue team when my neck was on the line. So what are you now? Colonel? Hmm. We don't use ranks where I am now. It's a new setup. Good place to work. Plenty of variety. I've been trying to get in touch with you over the past few weeks, actually. Put you in the picture. Something wrong with your phone? Nothing wrong with your phone or you don't want to be put in the picture? Either. Both. Any particular reason? I like it here. This is all I've got after 20 years of soldiering and spying. All right. Things could have been handled better when your wife and your son... Oh, I have no grievance about that. Does that imply you've got something else to complain about? Only that they're dead. You did a good job in Northern Ireland. What happened to the woman wasn't your fault. What made you decide to accept that job? To get back at the IRA? You know it doesn't work like that. It says on your file you're suffering from extreme operational fatigue. When I asked exactly what that meant, they laughed and said you'd lost your nerve. Bit of an oversimplification, but I can see what they mean. Then why don't you just sod off and leave me alone? Because I remember how you were years ago. The only thing that'll ever grow here is self-pity.
Alexander Petrov. Career KGB officer from the mid-50s onwards, Western Europe specialist. Retired with the rank of full colonel and slipped out of Moscow as soon as Gorbachev began to liberalize things. Now living in Paris. Says he's got information to sell. Unlikely to be of much use now, but it'll have to be checked out. Oh, come on. You can get the office junior to do something like that. Then it shouldn't be a problem for you. April in Paris, huh? I prefer August. You get the place to yourself. I was expecting someone younger, some clever little analyst out of archives, an Oxford man. Far too important for this kind of job. Oh, but you are not. A private in the trenches. And not so easily impressed, huh? I just do what I'm told. In my experience, it's always the troublemakers who say things like that. <laughs> I know it's true. I used to say it all the time. <laughs> that is rubbish. The fool thinks that parts of the economy actually worked. Oxford man. Glad it's all over. The glorious union of Soviet socialist republics? Of course. Because you never believed in it anyway? Because it makes possible to be a real communist again. For 60 years, the example of the Soviet Union has been the strongest argument against Marxism. But now that there is no more Soviet empire, it is possible to talk seriously again about revolution. Hmm. Beginning with that present bunch of thugs and gangsters back home, to getting it right next time. But if that's the way you feel, why do you want to sell us information? They tell me I need heart surgery, triple bypass, very expensive. And I don't mean to die just yet. Information with a price tag of 35,000 pounds is very expensive information. You have paid others much more in the past. But since the wall came down, it's a buyer's market. Less than your controller's salary for a year for a KGB secrets, a bargain. The KGB doesn't exist anymore. The Luftwaffe does not exist either. But I'd read in the Times three weeks ago another wartime bomb found danger to the public, etc., etc. A metaphor. My boss isn't going to stump up 35 grand for figures of speech. Then we are at an impasse. It seems like it. Unless, of course, you could give us a free introductory offer. To prove I have some things worth buying, eh? Do the names Annie Shepherd or William Roper mean anything to you? Should they? 
Were they agents of yours? Well, let us say I inherited them. So? So they are the free introductory offer. What did they do for you? You want everything for free, you find out. What was wrong with them? What do you mean? Let's say I inherited them doesn't exactly sound like a recommendation. But you wouldn't have selected them, is that what you mean? I was always very hard to please. But why didn't they please you? Did they fail to do what they were supposed to? If they are not known to you, they have succeeded. Uh, sometimes people are recruited for the wrong reasons. Such as? Oh, political convictions, desire to serve the cause, dangerous motives. Politics change, and causes do not endure. In my experience, the best agents believe in nothing and they find the recruiters, not the other way around. Do you know why? Because they need a certain kind of life, and only our uh, profession offers it. Lying and cheating. Stealing, deceiving, and getting away with it in the interest of the state, and being rewarded for it. How did you get into this filthy business? My lucky day at the job center. <laughs> Pour yourself another drink, private in the trenches. Let us tell each other war stories. Take it Shepard and Roper are no longer active. Uh. Our names all I get. Okay, they were students at Sussex University oh, 20 years ago. Do I contact you directly? How else? That's the other great advantage of our business. It justifies being alone. John Martin, your secretary said come straight in. Interesting setup. Saves going home when it's a case of working late, that's all. Oh, yeah, you're the guy who rang this morning. Security firm, isn't it? That's right, yeah. What's the problem? Well, it seemed to me that if you can work out a software program like this, we're not going to have any problems at all. Yeah, making pretty pictures to help sell cans of beans. Hell of an achievement. Diagnostic function is the key. I mean, otherwise you're going to have to call you people in to sort out every little glitch. We'd have to design one for you from scratch. How long would that take? Six months, maybe more. Business is booming. Eastern Europe is desperate for software, and things are picking up here again. Your board will be voting you a bonus. No board. No shareholders, just me. Yeah? How long since you started up? Ten years. What about your problem? Well... We're going to have to think about that. Here, this is a direct line. Call me in a couple of days. I'll see if I can fit you in sooner. Ah, I see you're at Sussex. On the Ho Chi Minh Trail, were we? Yeah. Let's all make the revolution. Not your scene, then. Are you kidding? I was just as big a mug for it as anyone. Eventually, I grew up. I'll be in touch. Excuse me, Annie Shepherd. Yes. 
Um, I've come to ask about enrolling in the German course. Oh, it's a conversation class, I'm afraid. It's not for beginners. That's no problem. My boss is sending me back to Munich for a few weeks. Was sind Sie von Beruf? Ich kann Werke Alarmanlagen und anschließen Sie. Und schließen Sie an. Ah, <laughs> und schließen Sie an. Ich habe viel den 80 Jahren in Frankfurt gearbeitet, aber seither bin ich nie zurückgefahren. Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, seven sharp. You can get an enrollment form from the office and we begin in here in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Dankeschön. Bitte sehr. I think he's selling us his memoirs, that's all. Oh, let him think he is. But we'd be getting our hands on a big resource. I mean, he must know where a lot of bodies are buried. A metaphor. And anyway, he says it's less than your salary. Sorry to interrupt. Could you take charge of this gang next week? Yes, of course. In the light of developments, trade and industry are about to go down on their hands and shiny knees and beg the Americans for even more money for the province. And it seems I must witness the humiliation. Neil, isn't it? Yes, sir. Glad to see you're fit again. Thank you, sir. What about Roper and Shepard? Nothing concrete yet. Well, if I'm called to account, it might be helpful if we could find a few dedicated enemies of the realm. We're coughing up. Retainer of £5,000 and a review in three months. Get a memo for me to sign. Any other questions? Is it true what Petrov said about your salary? Das Policy Conference ist genau wie ein Bierfest. Ich möchte mich selbst was zu trinken. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you all next week. Bonjour. Ça va? So did you read German at the university? No, history and politics. Oh, how come you speak it so well? Well, my mother was German. Her family were political refugees. They came here before the war. Once the war started, they were interned. German meant Nazi, even though they'd been opposing Hitler since 33. Oh, this, here we are. class is just for fun. By day I'm a civil servant. Oh. Which bit? Department of the Environment. What do you do for the environment? I can't tell you, I'm afraid. We're subject to the Official Secrets Act. Official Secrets Act? Well, just, I thought that was just for spies and stuff. No. I promise you what I do is absolutely banal and nothing at all to do with spies. Well, prost anyway. Prost.
Can I give you a lift home? No, it's all right, thanks. I can do with a walk. You sure? See you next week. Certainly will. Okay? That's good, it's okay. You're right now, calm down. It's okay. You'll be all right. Good girl. Okay. I still think you should have something stronger. No, really, really, I'm all right. And I hate being fussed over. Family? No, uh, they used to live next door. I'm a sort of honorary aunt. And what about you? What about me? Do you have a family? Not now. Divorced? No. No. Uh, killed in a car crash three years ago. I'm sorry. So is there, um... Is there a Mr. Shepherd? Spinster of this parish. Yes. I've got it. We got a problem. What the hell did you do to him? It must have been his heart or something. Christ, he went fast. I hardly touched him. Right, let's get up to here. Is Petrov expecting you? No, I thought I'd catch him on the hop. I think he'll like the deal a lot better if he sees the money right under his nose. Yeah, he'd been worked over, OK? Yeah, there was bruising to his face and lacerations to his wrist, but... Well, I'm no expert, but I think it was a heart attack. I think we should have a look at the autopsy report. And the place been searched? Oh, yeah, pulled apart and put back together again. And listen, 
Is there any chance of getting one of the chinless wonders at the embassy to have a talk to the traffic people here? Yeah. Good. Bonjour. Chinese food and Eric Clapton. How about you? Uh, roses, Mozart, and chocolate fudge cake. What's the problem? Sorry? Well, I haven't exactly got your undivided attention, have I? Well, if you really want to know, I was trying to think of a way to ask you a question without offending you. Go on. Live dangerously. Why aren't you married? <laughs> because nobody's ever asked me. Well, nobody I ever wanted to. There was a colleague of mine, a married man. Went on for years. And that's over now? His wife died last year and he moved on to someone new. He said I made him feel guilty. How do you feel? Fine. Or maybe I'm just in remission. There. And the time fits. The computer enhancement guys are on it already. So, the new men in Moscow get wind that Petrov's going to put stuff on the market. They send in a team to sort him out. Why get so worked up about leftovers from the old regime? Maybe the stuff he had to sell was more important than we think. And all we're left with is the free introductory offer. So far, yes. Uh, listen, I think we should put some pressure on Roper. What sort of pressure? Well, let the rabbit see the dog, tap his line, tail him, and just be a little bit careless. Why not the woman? Well, he's nearer the edge than she is. Afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Of course, there is another possible scenario. If Roper and Shepard were warned about Petrov, they may have paid him a visit. Too late. Excuse me. Draft agenda for next week's meeting. There are a couple of tricky items. Annie, it's Bill. What's the problem? Can I tell you over lunch? How you fixed? Saturday. Yes, can I have a bottle of the um, shadow cup? Very good, sir. Excuse me. Yeah, what is it? You're serving a guy who's sitting on his own in front of the fireplace, right? Uh-huh. Would you like to earn 20 pounds in two minutes? Yes, madam, he's through in the Linton suite. Please follow me. Thank you. Give 
Give us a minute. Very good, sir. So, what's the problem? I assume it was me. It was her. It seems she's been seeing this Hooray Henry for over a year. Well, I'm really sorry, Bill. But I I don't see what that's got to do to do with us. Well, now that she's gone, I've got nothing to distract myself. Pretend things didn't happen. I'm sorry, but I don't think it was ever my job to be a shoulder to cry on. You cried on mine. After that night on the beach, when that kid from Belfast stepped on the mine. Eamon, that was his name, wasn't it? Are you still with that guy from your office? No, it's finished. Well, then we're in the same boat. Maybe we should... You got someone new? I don't know. We've only just met. I could be fooling myself. You know how good I am at that. We all fooled ourselves. At least you and I did. I don't know about the others. I should be able to forget it, but I can't. I've even thought about going to the police, confess my guilt. No, it's not guilt. It's the feeling that one day it's all going to come home to roost. And I don't just and sit there waiting for it. I don't mean it about the police. I'm just letting off steam. Talking to the one person I don't have to hide things from. The one per... We'd better go. I'm told I'm not a pretty sight after the second bottle. Sorry, Bill. I wish I could help. I'll see you. Yes. up with you later. Wrong turning, comrade.
It's all right, Mr. Roper. What I said on the phone wasn't true. There hasn't been a break-in. At least not the kind I said. What the bloody hell is going on? Who are you, anyway? Get back! Back! Well, why wasn't it on my desk? Hold on. What happened? Oh, you first, I think. Somebody was tailing Roper. I thought it might have been the same people who visited Petrov. And, well, it's the oldest trick in the book. He let me think I had him cornered while he was cornering me. Aren't we supposed to use our initiative anymore? Provided you use your brain at the same time. Don't get out of communication like that again, understood? Mind you, you were right. One of them decoys you, the other one waits here for Roper. What about Annie? She got back all right. I've got watchers in place. Watchers? She's got to be brought in. Not yet. But they'll be going after her next, then the rest of the cell. What makes you so sure it's a cell? Roper said the others when he was talking to Annie in the restaurant. We've got to bring her in. No. She's the only known target for the Moscow group, and I want them, too. Well, if she's the bait, I want to do the babysitting. Why not? Because that's not what it's about. Getting even. I know that. Good. <laughs> the killer, apparently.
Has there been anyone since she died? I know. No, not really. Do you want to talk about it? About what? The voice in your head. The one that says, if only you behaved differently that day, taken the day off, gone to the seaside, the park. You've got to cut it loose, John. Let it go. Otherwise, you'll never move on. Maybe I don't want to move on. Then what are you doing here? Trust me. I know about voices too. Annie, don't get involved with me. I mean, I'm not worth getting worked up about. I know you're quite right. You're guilt-ridden, you're scared stiff of relationships, and you're much too puritanical just to settle for sex. So it's no wonder I started to fall for you the minute you turned up out of the blue. I'll... No, I'll go, I'll go. My treat. Delivery for Shepherd. Oh, lovely. Um, so can you hang on a sec? Annie, could you get some cash out of my wallet? It's in my jacket. Yeah, um, I'll take these now, OK, and then the lady... How? It was my fault. She found Roper's card in my wallet. Has she said anything? No, not a word. Wondering what the hell to do next, I would think. I'll have people there in ten minutes. Don't let her out of your sight. Over. Sorry about the tussle at the wine bar. Take it easy, guys. You really fooled me, didn't you? Still, it must have given you a good laugh. Come on, lady. and grumble. What? Been a bad day? You could say that. Oh, I thought you'd hung your boots up. So did I. So what are you doing down here in the bowels? I'm going to come and help you look through some of your snapshots. Oh. should be in your bed. Yeah. Then we end up dreaming of this pair. Except they're not a pair, it's a threesome. Now this is not the man who made a monkey out of me today. And neither is this. Yeah, I'm sure that's in this pair someplace. 
together. That's the thing. Night shift's over. It's after ten. Oh, God. For God's sake. <laughs> Come on, I'll buy you breakfast. <coughs> you don't have a single shred of evidence for any of this fantasy, do you? So, Alexander Petrov just picked your name at random. How should I know? what this man whom I've never heard of did or didn't do. <sighs> I keep thinking about the Lebanon. Don't we all? Mm. Mm. Sorry about this. Hello? She's just stonewalling everything. We've got nothing specific on her. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you down here, now. So thanks, Andy. your life, which you're going to spend telling me why British intelligence sent you to kill Alexander Petrov. What did you want that you wouldn't give you? I didn't kill him. He had a heart attack. Which you caused. Same difference. Why would I want to harm him? We were doing business together. Business? What kind of business? Negotiating. He wanted to sell information. He wanted money for a heart operation. That's why Moscow sent in a team to sort it out. Do you think I'm stupid? Hey, do you think I'm stupid? Even if Moscow knew, even if Moscow knew that he was selling, they don't care. Why should they care? Well, somebody cared. They cared well enough to, to start killing Petrov's agents. It's the truth. They killed a man called Roper. I was just on my way to question another member of the cell, a woman. Now, look, we, we've got visuals on the two men who did it. Faces. It's only a matter of time before we identify them. This is a crazy bastard. Only only way you can find out who did it. Oh. You have 24 hours to get these names. Do you understand? There'll be no second chance. Next time I'll kill you. Come on. We're wasting time. What's the problem? What if it turns out the same way it did with Roper? Jesus, he was hardly the first, was he? Yeah. Well, maybe you have to be there. You want to call the whole thing off? Let down the people that helped us? Shut up! Jesus, Tony, we're going to make headlines all over the bloody world. And you're standing here wringing your hands over just one guy? We're going to talk to our friend first. The next one's got to be handled differently. And he's going to help us. How did he find you? Must have been a tracker on the car somewhere. And he's not Russian? I don't think so. I'd say German. Stasi or one of the other DDR security services. Probably gone freelance now, killing for whoever pays best. Have you passed all the details on to archives? Of course. Well, my feelings are his tracks are well covered. Why? 
I got a very good look at him and I'm still breathing. And you agree with him? It's not the Russians cleaning house? Nah, someone else, for whatever reason. See what you can get out of Shepard. She doesn't know Roper's dead, nor Petrov. Hit her with that, see what happens. Are you... Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Sure, I'm terrific. Well, then we're in the same boat. Maybe we should... You got someone new? They did this to Petrov. I don't know, we've only just met. After he had told us about you and Roper. <laughs> Now, when they finished with Petrov, they moved on. Now, you listen to me, Annie. You are on the list. Now, the only way you'll survive is if we catch the people who are doing this. And the only way we're going to do that is for you to tell us what you were recruited for. Do you understand? Otherwise, you'll be thrown out of here and you'll end up just like them. What will happen to me? In the long run, I can't answer that. Well, then get me someone who can. Oh, you get this straight, Annie. You are in no position to negotiate. What's your mission? Was. They called it off four years ago. Our job was sabotage. We were supposed to proceed and facilitate a Soviet invasion of Western Europe. When were you trained for this? Initially from 74 to 76, then again in 83. Where? Czechoslovakia in the 70s, Libya in 83. We took package tours to Tunisia and they flew us across the border. What were your targets? In the power and communication industries. Parts of the electricity grid telephone networks. I never knew the specifics. Were there other groups? I assume so. We never knew for sure. How many in your group? Four. Me, Bill Roper, George Grant and Eddie Harris. What was your role in your group? Coordinator. I was the only one who knew the identity of the other three and how to contact them. How do we do that now? Where do we find Grant and Harris? Apparently, Harris sold this place months ago. Where's he gone? Well, they don't know. A hill farm, they think. Is there anyone else on this trail? Yes, it seems so. There were two men asking earlier today. Who were they? We're getting their descriptions now. I want to know within the hour. Yes, ma'am. As soon as we can. Do you have the other members of the cell? 
Harris wasn't where he's meant to be, and it seems that Grant may be their first victim. The police have him down as a missing person, according to his wife. You better speak to her. I'll check up on this story about the Soviet invasion plan. Oh, I can vouch for that one. Red Army scenario dating from the mid-70s. Scrubbed by Gorbachev. Told the Politburo that the army was crazy to think it could conquer Europe when it couldn't even handle the Afghans. Here, I'll do it. Down on your knees. Drop the weapons, carefully. Keep your hands where I can see them. State your business. Make it quick. We just want to talk. Yeah, we've got a message for you. From a friend. Then if not Moscow, who? Well, maybe someone who's at risk. Someone they can recognize. Someone who wants to make sure they can't damage him. Or expose him. Maybe someone who a long time ago worked for both sides. Have you taken this up with her? No, not yet. Talk to her. Now? Why not? Well, you told me to go and see Grant's wife. I can't do both. Not unless I take her with me and talk on the way. All right, do that. Try and treat her better than you treat the cars. Next one will be three in three days. Sir. How did Grant and Harris take it? When they were stood down, how did they take it? George Grant didn't say very much, but then he never did. I could never work him out. What about Harris? <laughs> he was angry. Well, he was in a rage, actually. He said he'd waited all these years to strike at the enemy, and now it had all been for nothing. Your targets were in power and telecommunications, right? So what was Harris doing down on the farm? He needed storage. He was the quartermaster, weapons expert. Ah, uh, explosive detonators, that kind of thing. Yes. He was a loner anyway. You didn't like him, did you? The way he looked at me made my flesh creep. He was a sadist, too. They sprang a surprise on us during some night exercises. Simulated explosions, gunfire, that sort of thing. Except there were some live mines around, and one of the men from another team was fatally injured. It seemed to excite Harris all the more. Sick. Why did you ever get involved in all this? Because I wanted to fight for what I believed in. Well, the KGB and the Soviet Union. Oh, as opposed to the CIA and people like Nixon and Reagan, you mean? <laughs> what were you doing when you were 20? Was your head buried in the sand? Didn't you notice the state of the world? What was going on in Vietnam, Nicaragua, Chile, South Africa? Yeah, well, I didn't have the advantage of being a student. Well, you didn't have to be a student. You just had to have a conscience and a brain. Get down! <laughs> Okay, sorry, false alarm. What we always said, it's an occupation, like France in the last war. That's not a political problem, that's a military situation. So forget diplomacy, forget politics. The only real solution is a military response. But they wouldn't let you do it. A year ago, we were 30 minutes away from getting three of the bloody cabinet in one go. And they came in firing. One of them was my own bloody cousin, for God's sake. We lost two. And we got out ourselves by the skin of our teeth. Shh. There's a car coming. Don't tell me he's turned up. No, I'm afraid not, but we're trying to get extra information which may help find him. <laughs> Don't you want your husband found, Mrs Grant? Look, 
My George has been missing for a long time, well before he walked out of the house that night. I wouldn't even have bothered informing the police if the power company hadn't insisted. Him being one of their senior control engineers, I mean. Mrs Grant, is there anything... It's unusual for somebody to disappear without somebody to help them. I mean, haven't you contacted any of his friends or his relatives? Well, he was brought up in a home, so there aren't any relatives, and he never really bothered very much with friends. Not even his mates he had from that spell in the army. He was always the moody type, right from the day we first met, but... These last few years, he just seemed to get more and more... depressed, I suppose you'd call it. Went whole days without any normal conversation at all. All he was interested in was the news and what was in the newspapers. Boring politics. Well, didn't you ask him what was wrong? Well, of course I did, over and over again. Tried everything I could think of. Even roped him into this when I needed an extra waiter or something. Look, it's obvious, isn't it? You mean another woman? A month or so before he went off, he spent a couple of weekends in town, said it was union meeting, something like that. First time he came back, he seemed a bit happier, but the second time he was the worst he'd ever been. Whereabouts in town? Where did he go? Just said that he was staying in some rooms above a pub. Mannions, I think he said, in Kilburn. George Grant wasn't Irish, was he? No, he was a northerner. So why would he come to the one part of London? Well, you can't move for IRA fan clubs. George Grant. Been a long time. Then I'll tell you what we're going to do. Right, come on then. Let's catch the basses with their knickers down and blow them all to hell. That's only the start. Why don't we talk to some of the people in the park? They might be able to tell us what George was doing here. No, we're due back at the safe house. In any case, if my boss knew I was within a mile of this place, I'd be up on a charge. I'm on a list of people the IRA would love to meet again. Why? What did you do to them? Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi, Andy. What, the guys we talked about earlier? Andy, I can't afford to buy you a drink on my wages. Merry Christmas, boys. Right tool for the job, eh? Where'd you find them? They found me. Thank God. You know, Eddie, ever since they stood us down, I've had this pain in my gut in my head. Now, I waited a while, thought maybe things would change again. But when the fascists took over in Moscow, I thought, right, enough's enough. So I went looking for the IRA. I left word and waited. Eddie, they laughed at me. I mean, not to my face, but just the same. One of them said to me, Ireland has no need for you, Mr. Grant. But they can still use people like you in Bosnia. Can you believe that? He thought I was a bloody mercenary. <laughs> we didn't meet George or Eddie Harris till we got to the training camp. For me and Bill, it started with an invitation to attend a student conference in Berlin, a big international do. All expenses paid. Is that where they did the recruiting? Yes. There was a man there called Schroeder, an East German, although we didn't discover that until later. He was a sort of talent scout, I guess. Could you give us a description? Um, he was about two or three years older than the rest of us. Uh, tall, medium build. He was a very good dancer. Just, he was light on his feet. <clears throat> Why? Doesn't matter. Ian, I'll see you later.
Told you I kept thinking of the Lebanon. This stuff came through four or five years ago. Some guy who was working over there as a cook sold it to the Cyprus station. Any names? No. Ten days after. So what does this tell us about the pair of them, apart from the fact they were mates with the PLO? <laughs> yes, you're right. It's not a lot. Who is this place? It's Jumfradi. It's not a training camp exactly. It's more of a safe haven, meeting place, you know, where they can compare notes and plan the next stage of the revolution. Archives have tied them to a camp in Lebanon used by the provost. I also spoke to a lady at Harris's old house and she was sure they had Irish accents. Now Grant spent two nights in Kilburn before he went missing. What possible rationale could the IRA have for being involved? Yeah. Particularly in the present climate. Well, I don't know. That's why I think I should go to Belfast. Belfast? Get some answers. That's the last place you're going. Are you so naive to think they'll forgive and forget? No ceasefire will ever apply to you. Sir, look, I know it's, it's a risk. It's not up to you. Is this the Petrov business? Yes, sir. We shouldn't be pursuing this as a priority. It's a murder inquiry. Let the police get on with it. But Annie Shepard's still at risk. Has this woman any useful information to provide of current significance? I wouldn't say so. Then, as I say, let's wash our hands of it. Liaise with the police and they can protect her. And tough luck if they fail. She chose to do what she did. Even if she has changed her mind since, I don't think I'm going to lose any sleep over it. That was stupid. Arguing with him. Now I'm going to have to change his mind. Well, getting the police to protect her... I thought this was some kind of business conference. It is. Hoping for more US investment into Northern Ireland. Well, security's a bit on the heavy side, isn't it? Well, the Americans are demanding certain guarantees. There are people coming who will be in a position to give them. Who? The ones who matter. Hello? Have you got his names for me yet? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm glad you called. I've got all the information you want. No, no. Hold on. I think we shouldn't meet. How do you get hold of a weapon like that? Well, we still have some friends. Just keep quiet. They look after us. Pass on any information or things of interest. While they keep their head down, you do the dirty work. No, that's not right. We've got the same objective. There's a point at which the price of occupying another country is just too high. And we've got to find that point. And as George said, the damage we're going to do with that is just the start. And if we do our job properly, then one day soon our friends are going to do a little house cleaning on their own. Then we'll get back to an Irish Republican army that really knows how to fight. It makes a cracking speech, doesn't it? To success. May the bastards live just long enough to know what hit them. We'll have to be bloody quick then. Slaunch you.
You are 30 minutes early. You were 30 minutes early. I was 45 minutes early. Otherwise, you'd still be playing games with me, wouldn't you? Well done, Mr. Neal. Now, do you have these names or not? Not yet. Herr Schroeder. Schroeder? Oh, Schroeder, well. It's been a long time since I've been known by that name. Who was it who told you? Is it one of Roper's associates, was it? Is it the woman? <laughs> Annie. That was her name, wasn't it? I should have guessed you would have known the agents of Petrov Rand. It was when I mentioned Roper's name that you first decided I might be telling the truth, wasn't it? If you don't have these names, what are we doing here? To even things up a bit. Now, who do you work for now? Whoever pays the most. These days, it's mostly the CIA and the Mossad. And who's paying you in this case? Nobody is paying me. This is personal. He found me. He trained me, saved me. He was a better father to me than the man my mother slept with. And I should have known before he was dead that he was the closest friend I shall ever have. When do I get these names? Depends. The reason I'm here is to do a deal. Do you want to talk? Don't you have a home to go to? No, no. Yeah, I've got a little place up north, but I, I don't think it's quite what you mean. So playing the lonely widower wasn't just part of your act, then? You asked me what I'd done to the IRA. I was working undercover in Belfast. And I discovered the unit that I'd penetrated had planted a bomb in Germany while I was serving there. It left a lot of dead bodies, including my wife and son. God. Twenty years ago, I can remember feeling the way you did. And yeah, I, I still get those feelings every now and again when I read the papers and watch the news. Well, the ones with power are still sticking it to the ones who can't fight back. But the problem is, no matter how good the cause, sooner or later, somewhere along the line, there's going to be another dead child. Listen, I'm going to have to go away for a day or two, maybe longer, I don't know. Now, it's possible you're going to be sent home, so I can't guarantee what protection you're going to get. If you feel any danger at all, use that number. Remember Schroeder, your East German dancing partner? I'm in touch with him. Now, don't ask why. The point is, he can be contacted on that number. It's an answering service, OK? You just say, this is John Neal's friend calling. And you leave the address and number where you're at. He can deal with any problems. And is that who I am? John Neal's friend?
no ping all over the place. Back to Charlie Redmond. Uh, listen, before you do that, I wonder, could we have a quick word up there? It seems, judging by the early moments, Colin, it's, it's a fairly strong breeze. You wouldn't think it from up here. Yes, I'd say it's a very, very strong breeze. The Arctic are taking up. Yes. Good game. Cheers, thanks a lot. Well played. Cheers. Excuse me, sorry. I, uh, I understand you might have something for the right pair of ears. That's right, but how do I know you are the right pair of ears? Oh, faith and trust. That's all we ever have. Is there some way we can talk? Well, what's wrong with him? I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the name. Harry Price. Yes, I know, don't I? No, you might. A few years ago, I wrote some stuff for The Independent and The Guardian got into a bit of bother. The editors weren't keen on me sympathising so actively. Mm. Forgive me, but what's on the agenda here, Mr. Price? Look, uh, do you know that face? Because I don't think he is who he says he is. Mm. Why don't you uh, watch the match? Oh, we don't Listen, do you have a contact number for a Harry Prince? Ah, let's try the Germans. Yeah. Ah, ah cheers. His hands. Donut. Get a blindfold off. Did he say anything about what he might be doing? Just that he was going away for a few days, maybe longer. Why? What's wrong? It's him, sure enough. This is better than Christmas. Let's get him out of here.
Thank you. We want to know who these men are and what they are doing. We'll do what we have to. Yeah, well, come on, then. Yeah. Why don't you go for some fresh air? You're an expert at this kind of thing, is that what you no, mean? No, I'm not expert, just willing. To do something I can't. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. For what? Disobeying orders. They had this plan. They wanted to kill cabinet ministers. But it was rejected by the council. They're out of control. We tried to stop them, but they got away. So why did they go after a bunch of KGB sleepers? What's the point? Perhaps, perhaps they have something that these men Lynch and Grady want. <laughs> All Petrov did was set up a cell of sabotage experts. On demolition men. Well, maybe that's it. The IRA kick out Lynch and Grady and they decide to carry on. So they need recruits. But, um, you know, they killed this man, uh, Roper. Well, his nerve had gone. My guess is that he said no and they had to kill him to keep his mouth and shut. that's why they used force on, on, on Petrov to get the list from him. What about these other men then? Um, um, Grant and uh, um, Harris. Grant set the whole thing up. That's why I was in that pub in Kilburn. Mm. Harris joined up too. They're getting to do what they were trained for. This means that they have a target, something big, something to show that they mean business. Yeah, a public event, political, <laughs> cabinet <laughs> meeting, but... Oh, God, I think I know what it is. Is your car outside? Yes. I haven't got time to explain. And what about her? Uh, tie her up, gag her, and secure the place. I'll fix it later. <laughs> when do they arrive? 20 minutes. They'll meet the others upstairs first, then there's a buffet lunch and drinks on the lawn with the minister in attendance. That must be moved inside. I'll try, but I can't promise the minister will be agreeable. Notify the IRA for all these years and then cower away from the lunatic fringe. Is Neil on his way? With Shepard. She's the only one who can identify Harris. By God, he's going to pay for this if he's wrong. He'll all be paying for it if he's right. Where does this information come from? I'll explain that later. The point is, this is the perfect target. The enemy and their own opponents all in one go. No, you'll explain now. What the hell were you doing in Kilburn? It was cheaper and quicker than going to Belfast. Look, if I'm wrong, 
defy me. Do whatever you want. But until we know I'm wrong, let's, for Christ's sake, concentrate on what might happen here. So what are we looking for? A bomb? What? <laughs> Who knows with these people anymore? I'll get an RT and prowl about, OK? The minister's just arrived. Any news? Hello. Well, we can get up to that roof. Sign? No, nothing so far, no. But you've got to get them inside. No, I've tried that. No go. No, they don't want even a hint that anything might be wrong without stronger evidence. George, what's happening? Talk to me, talk to me. Eddie, I'm going up now. They should be around the back in a couple of minutes. I'll give you the signal when they're gathered round the steps. So stand by. If you get some people up here, at least I can keep a lookout. Oh, I never thought I'd be worried about his security. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, come in. Can you hear me? Oh, 
Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I can't go back to what I was. You nearly got yourself killed to save my life. The least I can do is make good use of it. And it's about time I saw all those places I used to talk about so passionately. Could be dangerous. Come with me, John. I want to be with you. But I can't if you... if you do what you do. I can't make a new start like that. But we could make one together. Take care. You take care. Send me a postcard. I just wish I understood why. Petrov explained it to me. He said he never recruited anyone with political beliefs. Just people like me. What did he mean? People like you? The ones who can't live any other way. Next time.